I'm not excited. I'm full of, I'm full of tension. <laughs> we are bound by the ideology of the party. Before we were under the impression that, uh, you know, like uh, Rengmas are, you know, like uh, the lost child, you know. But today the Rengma peoples have, the Rengma people are coming to the forefront. I believe I'm in a good position and I strongly believe that I can win this election. I guess um, there's not much of a difference because whether as an anti-corruption crusader or whether as a budding politician, uh, <clears throat> the goal is the same, to serve the people. So I believe uh, that transition has been seamless. Nothing went wrong. This is what I want to assure the Naga people. The primary goal is to win the election. So I was more or less focused on the election because I'm a new candidate. RPP is contesting the first time. Whatever needs to be done had, had already been done by the party in the past uh, one, one and a half years. So we felt that uh, it was time to, you know, put our concentration in winning elections. And therefore, I think, I guess that's the reason why the party was silent for the last few days or few weeks. And uh, <clears throat> the whole party machinery was geared towards, uh, you know, like, um, uh, was, uh, I should put it in this way, was uh, more or less focused on Tsimini district or Tsimini constituency. So I want to assure the Naga people, there was nothing wrong with the party. So if there are any speculations, please don't, uh, uh, don't be convicted by such speculations. Yeah. Absolutely. Once upon a time, <clears throat> our honorable uh, advisor, Manovo Kikon, he was the lone MLA in the opposition. Once upon a time. That was, I guess, in 2016, 17, during those years when uh, there was the so-called oppositionless government. So Manovo was the only opposition MLA. But he made a lot of noise in the assembly and then Naga people realized that, yes, one man can, can make a difference. As to the question whether, you know, or as to the question as to why we could, be, we could put up only one candidate, I mean, the answer is very simple. I guess uh, we did a part. We made repeated appeals in the past one and a half years to the Naga people to, you know, identify good leaders so that we can give them RPP tickets so as to, you know, enter the assembly. But uh, I'm sorry you say, Nobody approached us, so we cannot do anything. See, we have been fighting against corruption. And then before elections, we made it very clear to the Naga people that we will not be having any people alliance with any political parties. So as you are aware, uh, BJP has a B team, NDP has a B team, and RPP is a standalone party. <clears throat> In the beginning, there were lots of accusations against the RPP that we are the P team of somebody or some uh, other party. So we were trying our best to explain to the Naga people that, see, RPP is not the B team of any person or any political party. Nobody believed us. Today, the proof is amply clear. There's, there's, the proof is me and the RPP. I'm the only candidate in the whole of Nagaland. There are 183 candidates, I guess, I believe. So out of the 183 or 186 candidates, I'm the only candidate and we are not aligned with any party. So this is clear proof that we are not aligned with any political party or we are not the B team of any political party. So I want the Naga people to understand this and let this put all speculations to rest. For any political party, ideology comes first. 
principles, visions, ideology. And we are bound by the ideology of the party. And I believe it's time that people start trusting or believing in the ideology of the respective political parties. Don't put your hope in the candidate. Because if you put your hope in the candidate and not in the ideology as such, then I believe uh, the present system will continue. So it's important that we abide by the ideology of the party. And I believe that the RPP is doing that through my candidature. We talked about good governance. Now other political parties are talking about good governance. I believe they copied from us because so far we haven't seen good governance. But during elections, other political parties have started, you know, like uh, uh, airing their manifestos. And one, uh, one of the main agenda of all these uh, political party, parties are that, uh, is that uh, there should be good governance in Nagaland. We, we, I believe we were the first party in the, in, the, in the state to speak about good, good governance. Secondly, we have been talking about rule of law. We have been talking about uh, women and youth empowerment. We have been talking about self-reliant economy. So these are some of the uh, targets uh, of the RPP in the long run. And secondly, obvious, and it's very obvious that we are against uh, anti-corruption as such. So these are some of the core issues which will continue to raise. As you know, it's all about money politics in the state of Nagaland. And, uh, I believe this is one of the main reasons why uh, people were discouraged from approaching us. So whether it's men or women, <coughs> people haven't, candidates, have, potential candidates, haven't approached, us because, haven't approached us because of this issue, the issue of money in politics. If you go to my kitchen, you will see that uh, people have contributed uh, lots of uh, essential commodities. They have, they have given, you know, potatoes, rice, onions, and every day, I mean, every day, almost every day, we are, you know, like, um, we are maintaining the kitchen. So basically, the, the villagers, they are, they are giving us pigs and, you know, like cows and, you know, things like that. And even in terms of funding, money-wise, uh, people have been donating. We don't have donation box as such, but people have been donating. So, and then I've raised resources from my own, and therefore, I guess, uh, that's it. Tsiminu as a separate district, yes, people have uh, high expectations. In the sense that being a separate, uh, having a separate district is a plus point, number one. Number two, uh, since we are now a separate district, people have high expectations in the sense that there will be lots of developmental activities by way of infrastructure and projects and whatnot. So it's important that um, the Rengma people elect the right leader. I'm not claiming that I'm the right leader as such, but the Rengba people should know who is who. Because um, until unless we have the right leader uh, leading the district, of course, an MLA is a, a leader of a constituency and a, an MLA or a minister is a leader for the whole of Nagaland. So regardless, we feel that, I personally feel that this district needs uh, lots of infrastructural development and uh, we need we have lots of unemployed youth in terms of thousands and nobody can go get uh, government jobs as such uh, government jobs are hard to come by these days so until then you prepare hard for your exams uh, getting a job is going to be very difficult nevertheless um, i believe uh, the rengmas uh, now they have a different level of understanding before we were under the impression that uh, you know like uh rengmas are you know like uh, mm, how do you put it the lost child you know but today the rengma people have the rengma people are coming to the forefront and uh, they have this confidence now that yes we can do it the rengmas can do it even if i'm not voted the power even if i lose the party will always remain the same because the ideology will always be there. So, as I've said before, it is not about me. It's about the ideology. And the RPP is bound by its own ideology. And as far as the party exists, and the party will continue to exist, even if I lose, I mean, there's still hope for the Naga people.
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.